Hey everyone, today I'm going to give you an instructional video on how to build your brand over social media using a contest. This is going to cover everything. We're going to talk about which type of contest you should create. We're going to create a photo contest. I'll show you also how to tweak it so you can create a essay contest or a video contest as well. We're also going to cover how to handle voting and how to monitor that to make sure there's no fraud. Then we're going to name a winner, all from start to finish, all in this one video. So I apologize in advance if this runs a little long. So Mother's Day photo contest is what we're going to be creating today. Here's an example of how it's going to look when it's done. Um, this is just the basic template. You can customize this and we'll go over how to customize this. But some of the elements you'll notice about this, you've got a header, you've got some instructions about you know what this contest is about. Um, you've got a countdown timer. You can upload a photo by clicking that button. And you've got a list of all of the different entries along with the ability to share to social media, vote on this particular entry, and it's got the name and the date of the entrant as well. They can click on the photo and get a nice blow up to see the detail and under upload a photo, it's very simple. Um, they can upload one or two photos. That's totally up to you when you create your contest. Um, but this is where you would enter your description and instructions for the people that are submitting their photos. And down below, there's other opportunities to um, show a footer if you wanna show some additional information. But once they upload their photo, it takes them to a thank you page where you can give them some follow-up instruction Maybe ask them to go visit your store if you have an e-commerce site, but you don't want to let people go once they're done submitting. Um, just keep them engaged with your brand and ask them to do the next logical step in your particular sales funnel. So enough of this. Let's jump right in and create one of these. So you'll recognize this. This is where you enter when you first sign in. Click on Campaigns. From here, you're going to click Add New. You're going to filter for the type of contest you want to run. I'm going to click Photo and Contest. And I'm going to create, uh, first let's check the preview. This is what we were just looking at. You can always generate a preview of any of our templates if you want to make sure it's the one you want before you select it. Next step, you'll want to click Setup Instructions. This is some of the information we're going to be covering on this video, but you might as well get a refresher at the time of creating it. Some of the instructions are unique to the template you're creating, so it's always a good idea to scan those instructions, and it's in a separate window, so you can always put it off to the side and leave this um, window up while you're creating your contest, so you can always refer back to it. And once you're convinced this is what you want to do, click Use This Template. What the software is going to do is create a complete campaign from start to finish for you. So now all we need to do is go in and modify it for our particular needs. Starting with the campaign name. It's going to create a campaign name for you, but I'm going to call this Demo Mother's Day Contest. We'll always want to leave the display photos on. Um, if you uncheck this box, as soon as somebody signs into your contest, instead of showing them all the photos, it would only have the submission form. I don't recommend doing this um, because if you do, they're not going to be able to see all of the entries to the contest and people won't be able to vote. Um, collect photos, obviously we want to leave that intact as well. Don't worry about going back in um, once the voting period starts to uncheck this because what happens when the voting period starts, it no longer allows them to submit an entry automatically. So this is something that you only need to set once and I always recommend having this checked so people can submit those photos. The next decision is whether you want them to allow two photos or only one photo. For a Mother's Day contest, I don't see the need for two, 
But if you are having like a before and after kind of a workout challenge or something like that, it would make a lot of sense to do before and after. Just make sure that you enter the heading. So when they're entering that photo, they know which photo to enter. If it's the before photo, the after photo, give them that simple instruction on which photo to enter in each one of the fields for uploading. For now, we're gonna only choose one photo. And rules and disclaimer link, you'll always wanna have a rule for a contest, um, even if it's really basic rules. And what I'm gonna do is link up a free template that we offer people. You'll need to modify this, but it's just a basic general template that you can use for your rules. And it covers all the basics. So all you need to do is a kind of a find and replace to replace the name in our template with the name of your company. And it will be pretty much ready to go, um, be sent off to your attorney to have a quick look, make sure that all of your rules um, cover your particular brand's needs. Um, you'll always want to create a link text for your rules. You can call it rules. I've seen people call it um, contest rules. We'll call this one contest rules. Um, what we're going to do is just paste our own rules here. But if you create a really long set of rules, you might host those on your own website or somewhere else, and you can link out to those rules. To make matters simple for this demo, I'm just going to paste rules here and say these are my contest rules. Even if you have three pages of rules, you can paste them in this field, and that will allow our software to host those rules for you, and it will pop them up in a new window. The next step is to create a submission form. Our default submission form should be sufficient, but if you edit this, you can add additional fields. Um, since this is a Mother's Day form, um, you know, depending on what your business is, you might want additional pieces of information. Like if you have a sales team, without a doubt, they're going to want to know the phone number of this person. Um, these are good leads we've found. So don't treat these as just some fun thing that people can do to engage with your brand. People that submit to this are likely interested in your particular product. If you're targeting your ads right, driving people um, to this particular contest. And a lot of these people are on your prospect list that you've emailed to invite to the campaign. So get that phone number so the sales team can follow up with them after the submission. So I just dragged over the phone field. There's really nothing else I need to do other than dragging it over. And I am going to preview that form, make sure it looks good. This all looks fine. So I'm going to exit the preview and save. Uh, let's just come up with a name. Let's call it contest. And as you can see, it saved this as a form template that I can use anytime in the future for all of my contests. I'm not going to select double opt-in. I would only do that if I'm in um, you know, GDPR uh, country that requires that. List integration, this is where you would want to integrate your MailChimp or whatever other list. We have all of these native integrations. Uh, we also have HTML form integration, Zapier integration, and Webhook integration. So if I'm using SendFox, I would just choose that and um, choose the list within SendFox I want to send this to. Now it's worth noting here that just choose, if you just signed up with our software, and you choose MailChimp, it's not going to give you an option for a list like it is here. The reason it's doing this for me is when I first signed up, I integrated. So go to the top right, choose integrations, and that's where you're gonna enter your MailChimp username and password to integrate our software with your MailChimp account. So this assumes that you've already taken that step. So I've got my list integration set. Next, I'm gonna move on to email notifications. These are very important. Um, I recommend not having MailChimp send that first email. Have the information of each entrant sent to your MailChimp account for future marketing, but for the contest notifications, let us handle it. And the reason for that is, first of all, we use the highest deliverability service out there for email delivery. It's better than MailChimp. And the second reason is we have triggered emails that go 
out based on actions taken within your particular contest and MailChimp won't know when to send those out. So the first notification you'll definitely want to check is upon form submission, send a thank you email. We already have a default template selected for you. All of these templates are included within your account, um, but you'll always want to go in and edit these because we don't know what your particular brand is of your company. Um, make sure all of this information is correct. We pull this straight out of your account preferences um, because you've already set up your default um, sender information and email information. The subject line, we already include personalization. So if a guy named Frank signs up for your contest and submits a photo, it's gonna say, thank you for your contest form submission, Frank. And this sounds a little canned as a response. You might wanna say, thank you for your contest entry. So let's just change this. And you know your brand voice better than we do. We've kept this really generic. I highly recommend you know, being playful with this if you have a playful brand. If you're a law firm and you wanna keep things serious, you can you know, tone it down a bit. Um, if you wanna add additional personalized fields, it'll list all of the fields that are in your submission form, um, plus a few other available personalization fields. And this will add those to your subject line. Now the message itself, um, this is not our standard template. We've already modified this one. Uh, for a previous client. So this is where you would want to insert your header and change the um, entry information here, the instructions, and of course put your particular brand at the bottom and a footer if you have one. If you want to add somebody's name like we have here, the way to do that is click insert personalization and select their first name and it will drop it in. Once this is done, you can send yourself a test. You can also preview how this will look and you can save it when you're all done. So let's go down and check out the next notification. Okay, the next one is upon form submission, send an internal notification email. This would be great if you have an internal sales team um, because this will send an email with all of the contacts um, information from the submission form so you can immediately follow up on that with a sales call. You can also check this one which is upon approval of submission send a congratulations email. The reason we like to have a separate email for this versus just including everything in the first email, all of your um, submissions should be reviewed before approving them just to make sure that there's no copyright violations, no um, you know, nudity or anything like that. You don't just want to automatically put on your branded campaign template anything that people choose to upload to your contest. So I recommend having a, um, like the, there is a way to bypass the approval step, but I do not recommend it. So if you have approvals and moderations left on, you'll definitely want to check this box. And what this will do is not only tell them that their um, entry was approved, but this also gives you an opportunity to ask them to go and share. Give them that specific instruction um, to share. And that's what our default uh, template has, is time to share. And yes, it will give them a specific share opportunity for their particular entry. So I'm gonna leave it as the default and I'll leave it up to your design team to come up with something that's very on brand. By the way, if you run a lot of contests, sweepstakes, and campaigns through our software, I recommend that you go to account preferences. If you're an agency, it would be called workspace preferences. There is a one-time HTML email template that you can create that automatically applies a custom header and a custom footer to every single email template that we send out within this workspace or this account. So I recommend you take that step so every time you create an email template, you don't have to recreate all of your branding, all of your footers and things like that. Moving on to contest options. So you can have your contest start immediately or you can have it start in the future. What happens if you create a future date? If anybody goes to your contest and that date hasn't transpired yet, they're going to see all of your branding but where the 
contest information would be in the main area, it's just going to have a countdown timer and it's going to ask them to come back at that time. So I'm going to have this one start immediately. And for the end date, this is the most important part of the setup. It's a big consideration. There's two ways you can have your contest run. You can have two distinct contest periods, which is this option down below, meaning you have a very specific voting period and a very specific submission period, and those two do not overlap. So what would happen in that case is, let's say you have a one-month contest. You could have a two-week submission period where you're giving people a deadline. You have two weeks to submit your entry, and that's it. And at the end of that two weeks, our contest is going to automatically switch over. It's not going to allow any more submissions, and it's going to allow people to vote. And then for two weeks, it's going to have a countdown timer um, that resets and tells them you've got two weeks to vote. So here are the pros and cons of this. So one of the nice things about this is um, if, if people try to vote, it will automatically capture their email address. It says, hey, it's a little too early. Give me your email address and we will reach out to you when it's time to vote. So you're, you're capturing that email and you're getting them to come back to your contest later. Getting people to engage with your brands multiple times can be a benefit. The other thing I like about the two contest periods is it's just very specific about what you're asking them to do. Um, when, when it's the voting period, you're only asking them to vote. And when it's the submission period, you're only asking for that entry. Another thing I like about the two contest period um, contests is that they're a little more fair. If you have, and we'll go over this in the one contest period, but with the two contest periods, it doesn't matter if you're the first person to enter the contest or the last person to enter the contest. The voting period is the same length of time for both of those scenarios. When you jump into the one contest period, however, the way this works is from the first minute of the contest, somebody can submit an entry and vote on that entry. So let's say you have a 30 day contest and there's just this one big 30 day period. That's the only thing I don't like about these is that um, somebody could submit their vote or their entry on the last day and they're gonna have a very uh, limited chance to win because somebody else has been there for up to 30 days and they've been accumulating votes all of that time. Um, just a little detail here about the, the one contest period. It's fairly simple to explain because um, there really are no mechanics behind it. Everything is available from minute one of the contest. People can submit. The voting button is activated, so it doesn't even need to capture an email. People can go ahead and vote for whatever entries are, are there. And it's a very simple contest. Another thing I do like about these contests is that if you're using a two contest period, and somebody submits, well, um, they could, you could tell somebody to go and vote for your entry, and it might not be approved yet. So the problem with that is they won't even see it yet, and they won't be able to vote on it yet. So with the one contest period, they'll be able to vote on it right away, as soon as it's approved at least. So you've got that advantage where um, people can share immediately after they enter, and when people click through, they'll be able to vote on it as long as it's already been approved. Uh, they don't need to wait the two weeks in order to vote. So um, for this particular case, I'm going to actually choose the two contest periods because this one is a little more complicated to set up and I want to show you how to do this. So with two contest periods, you're going to need to select what those periods are. The deadline to submit entry um, is the first expiration you need to think about. So let's say this is starting on uh, November 1 of 2020. What I'm going to want to do is change the date to end, let's say, November 14th. Let's give them two weeks. The uh, templates, when you create something from template, it creates it way into the future. So the first thing I'm going to do is click here. Don't use this or it'll take you forever to scroll through 100 years. <laughs> so just click right here and use your backspace. We're gonna call this 2020. And let's click in here again to change the month. And let's click here to change the day to 14. Oh, whoops. 
as soon as you start arrowing over up here, it's going to overwrite your changes. So I'm going to go in and type 2020 without using the calendar tool. And instead of 949, I recommend having this start at midnight or something more official. So you can put it in your official rules that you have this contest starting at 1159, for example, the night before. Um, the deadline to vote, and yeah, this one we would probably want to set up at the end of November if it's a one month co contest, but that's totally up to you guys. So this checkbox, upon vote op voting opening, send emails reminding the entrance to share. I highly recommend doing this. So what this is going to do is, remember that two week period when people can only enter, and if they try to vote, it's going to capture that email and remind them to vote. Well, when you check this box, this is what sends out those emails. And you can even change these particular emails that remind people to vote. So it's just another branding opportunity and um, it gives them a link to come on in and vote. So I highly recommend using that for the two period, the two contest period contests. Next, the voting frequency. This is extremely important as well. An individual may vote on an entry once per campaign. I highly recommend more frequently than that because remember, this is all about branding. And if you want these people to share more, well, the more frequently you give people to vote, the more frequently they're going to share. So I'm going to say once per day. What that means is because our um, campaigns have fraud prevention, we only allow a person, we use cookies, we only allow them to vote once per, per whatever frequency you set here. So if they come back tomorrow exactly the same time, after 24 hours and one minute, it's going to allow them to vote again. So again, more opportunity for the entrant to share, encourage them to share every day. If you set this once per week, well, it's not gonna make much sense for you to remind them every day to go and share their campaign. So it's just less frequency, less action going on in the campaign, and you want as much sharing as possible. We've had brands that are really not that popular on social media generate over 30,000 referred visits to their um, contest because of highly frequent voting. So again, I encourage, do it daily. Next, um, duplicate vote blocking. I recommend using standard unless you've run contests in the past and you have a particular set of abusers that are um, getting around our fraud prevention. Um, what happens here is with standard, we use cookies to restrict multiple votes. But if you have somebody that's using private windows, um, we try to recognize that on most browsers and we ask them to to use the reCAPTCHA image in order to um, prevent that vote. Um, but if you click strict, it's going to not only use cookies, but also their IP address to, to restrict multiple votes. And that's much harder to get around. Um, the problem with this is, let's say you're a business to business company that sells to other businesses. They might have one IP address at their router that is shared with 20 different employees. So if they have five different employees that try to vote for your contest, it's only gonna work for one of them and it's gonna block the other four people out. Uh, the same thing could happen if there's like a shared IP address at an apartment building and multiple people try to vote, something like that. It's not likely to happen, but if it's very important to you that every single vote counts, then I do not recommend using strict. Vote counter. So you can display the vote counts for all entries. And what this means is in your gallery, it's actually going to tell them that you know this particular entry has 20 votes and this other one it has 100 votes. You can also hide the vote counts for all entries. It will never tell them how many votes are there. Or you could choose this one, which is wait until voting ends, then hide the vote, vote counts. So the reason we like to do this is once the voting is over and people are waiting for the results, it's no fun if you can see the vote count because if you are naming the winner based solely on the number of votes, you kind of lose that anticipation. People can go through and kind of figure it out. And the reason that's also not good 
that's the time when you're going to go through and check for fraud. And I'm going to show you how to do that. But that's, you don't want people saying, hey, wait a minute, that's not the photo that had the most votes. Then you have to go back and explain to them, well, a hundred of those votes were fraudulent. So they actually didn't have as many votes as the next one on the list. So this is the one I highly recommend you use. Um, second place is this one. Hiding the vote counts. Um, the benefit of using this is if one of the entrants has a thousand votes and another one has five, not only is that discouraging for the person with five, they might not go and share with their friends because they feel like they have no chance. Another problem with that is somebody might not even submit their entry for a photo if they see that somebody else already has hundreds of entries. So hiding the vote count really equalizes the chances for all of the other contestants. It can also bias people's votes. They might say, you know what? Somebody else sees a lot in this picture. They, all these people can't be wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and vote for the one that has a thousand votes and not vote for the one I actually prefer, but it only has 50 votes, you know, so they second guess themselves and vote for the one with more votes. Let's continue. This is the most fun part of creating your campaign. You actually get to see how it's going to look. You can add your logo. You can change virtually anything about this. This is just an image that you can replace with your own image if you prefer what you guys come up with. Um, you can use a, an, a transparent ping and show the background through it. Um, you can click in here and just enter whatever you want. So we can hit control, like shift enter to jump down to a new line and you can say things like, love your mom. Let's see here. Um, share a photo of her and tell us why she deserves to win. So that's a horrible thing to say, but you know, I'm sure you'll come up with something more creative. That's what your creative team is for. Down below, we have a countdown timer. I do not recommend getting rid of this because this is what tells people um, how much time they have left to do things like submit their entry and vote. So I'm gonna click this to highlight it and just show you in case you ever delete this and need to add it back. Um, it's within the HTML editor down here and it's called the countdown. So you can always click this and edit it. Um, what I would always recommend you do is use the contest end date for the end time. And what this will do is synchronize it with your contest end time. So if you entered November 14th, it's automatically going to use that as your end date. What it's also going to do is reset at the end of each one of the two contest periods. You can change the width if you don't like the way it looks, if it's too big. So I am going to, you can also change the colors and some other formatting issues there. So here's a preview of what um, the images are going to look like. Uh, this all looks fine to me. So let's jump over to the entry screen and this is where we're going to change that. So the entry screen is using the same header as the previous one, but this is where people are going to submit their form. You'll recognize that the phone number that we added to our form is already here. I like the way this is formatted, but if you want to change anything in here, just click in it and you'll notice on the left side, it navigated automatically to the edit form section. So I can immediately go in here and I can change field background colors. Um, right now I've got the opacity at zero, but watch what happens to the fields over here when I change this. So I can change the opacity to like 50% and it's got a nice effect. Everything you can dream of changing is over here on the left side. So I encourage you to really take a look. Um, you can move the field labels above the field instead of inside the field like they are here. There's just a lot of different ways you can personalize it. And also everything you see here, you can click on and um, you can actually modify so the it's okay to send me email updates is actually a form field. So you would edit any of this stuff inside the form itself. 
And you do that by, um, once you click inside here, anywhere inside your form, you'll notice an edit um, button pops up over here and you can check this and it will allow you to edit your form right here within the editor. And this is really convenient. If you notice you made a mistake or you wanna add a field. So over here, when you click in here also, um, and you get these options, um, there's other elements that you can change. You know, if you um, like want to change the word and, you can just click on it and change that. If you want to change the language of your contest, scroll towards the bottom and click edit language. And this is where you can translate to, you know, one of over a hundred different uh, languages and it will automatically change the language of your entire contest. Just going down some of these other options on the left here, um, you can import a design from any of your other templates. Like right now we have over 60 templates. What you can do is import and overwrite everything about your contest by just clicking select template and scrolling through our list of different styles. If you've already spent time um, on your header and things like that, do not check this box, only import the style settings and it will basically change all of your fonts and your backgrounds, things like that. You can also import from a campaign and import from other campaigns you've created in the past. Your page background can be changed here. You can choose an image like we have here. You can eliminate the image. You can also create an image that only appears behind the campaign area. So the parts off to the left, right, above and below your campaign area in the middle um, will not have your campaign background. Um, it would just have a color and the color would be whatever you set for your background. There's various options for your header. You can eliminate your header. Um, you can have um, a fixed height header or expand to fit, which is what I recommend if you're using an image in your header. There are other videos we have on our YouTube channel that will show you how to really perfect the design of your campaign. Um, I want to go over some more specific contest um, tweaks that you can make. So let me skip ahead. Let's see. For edit buttons, um, like when people are submitting to the form, you can change the um, text here. So you might say like submit entry for the form submit button so it's really clear what they're submitting. Edit widget, I also want to show you because this is critical. When you're um, hosting this contest, there's a number of ways that you're going to need to share this. If you want to get a wide audience, you can add this contest as a tab to your Facebook page if you have over 2,000 followers. Um, and that's done in the last step of the campaign under Save and Deploy. Save and Deploy will also give you a microsite URL, so we will host the entire campaign for you and give you just a single URL that you can share via email. You can pu publish that link to social media to kind of take them out of the newsfeed and onto your branded microsite. But there's also a number of other ways that you can get your contest out there. And my favorite way is to get that directly onto your website. If you have a lot of traffic come to your site already, it's it's a fun way to engage with your visitors to your, not just your website, but also like if you have a separate blog, you can add it to each one of those things. So we have a number of widgets that we create for you. And those four different types are iframe, tab, pop-up, and button. I'll go over these briefly. Um, the button pop-up is basically a button image that you create will give you all of the code to add this anywhere on your page. So you can add this you know, in the middle of your page, at the bottom of your, your website or blog um, to say, hey, go and check out our, our um, Mother's Day contest. You specify the height and we take care of the rest of the coding. When they click that button, it's going to um, pop up the entire campaign that they can take without even leaving your particular web page or blog. The pop-up, you can have the pop-up show when people arrive at your homepage. And this is very important. Only have it do it on the first visit. That way it doesn't annoy them if they come back again. You don't want to constantly be reminding them of this. 
Um, I also recommend you delay the pop-up for a couple of seconds. Um, maybe even do it, like if you're an e-commerce store, maybe even do it on page exit intent. So if you're running a lot of Facebook ads to your e-commerce store and you want to de-anonymize all of this traffic that is flowing in and leaving when people try to bounce from your e-commerce site because they don't have a need for your product at this moment, well, what a great way of capturing them. On page exit, you know they're interested in the types of products you have, so why not have an exit intent pop-up that jumps up and says, hey, before you go, go ahead and you know check out the different photos um, people have submitted to our contest and submit your own or vote for these. So it's just a great way to hopefully capture their email if they submit to your campaign. And you can change the fly-in effect as well. You can also run a tab and these sticky tabs remain on the side of your page. So it can say like photo contest um, and it will remain right here or wherever you want to place it on your blog or website. You can also have these automatically open. So let's say you want to do the same thing I just mentioned with the pop-up. You can delay the tab opening until they intend to exit. So what would happen is the tab would always be visible, but if somebody tried to leave your e-commerce site, the second they went above the um, e-commerce site area, um, this tab would slide open and you would get this beautiful contest, um, mobile optimized, you know, so it would be, it would fit the screen just, just right. They could submit their photo, vote on photos without even leaving your e-commerce site. And it's a great way to capture their attention and disrupt them as they're trying to flee your site. You can also have it auto close after a couple seconds. So that's more of a peekaboo effect where it opens and then closes. Now I'm gonna jump over to the iframe. This is also a fairly simple one. Let's say you really wanna have this on a particular page of your website and you want it to be embedded. So the entire functionality of the campaign occurs on the site and not on some kind of a pop-up. Well, I recommend iframe for that. Just specify the size, we'll create all the code for you. Advanced settings is where you would go to change your um, page title and description. We already have default titles and descriptions and keywords for all of our templates, but you might wanna go in and tweak these. That'll help SEO as people um, search for these types of terms, it'll help find your particular contest. I always recommend replacing these two items. The page image, we already have one for you in here, but it's if you make tweaks to your campaign, take a screenshot, upload that as a page image. And the reason it's important to have this as part of your um, meta information, and that's what this is, is SEO and OG tags. Um, if you change this, then what happens is when you share this on Facebook or if anybody else shares your microsite on Facebook, it's going to generate a beautiful preview. And this is the image that will be used as the preview image when it shows up on those news feeds. You can also upload a page favicon for your particular contest. If you have any tracking and retargeting tags, this is the place to, to add those. Um, so for example, if you're using Facebook ads to drive people to your contest, well, you're certainly gonna to wanna to have a pixel here on the thank you screen to show that they converted. Um, and if they don't convert, but if they do um, enter your contest or at least get to that entry page, then you, you might even want to retarget those people and say, hey, you didn't finish your entry. Come on back and enter your submission. I'm sure you have something great. So to do that, you would want to put your Facebook pixel here and have another Facebook um, conversion event that would happen only on the thank you screen. So you could differentiate between people who just land on your campaign versus submitting to your campaign. You can also add CSS. If the um, changes that you're making using our um, editor on the left here are insufficient, you know, if you wanna increase the size of this text, for example, and you're not seeing how to do that on the left, all you need to do is um, add CSS and the CSS can change this. Hopefully your designer knows CSS well enough to do that, but once they provide you with the CSS to use, just drop it in here by pasting and it will work. You can also change the name. We default to the name of the workspace, but if you're creating this for a different client, you can add their company name here, and it will use that information and things like 
you know, accepting terms of use for the contest, it will drop in their name instead of the default name that's in your workspace. Finally, we get to the thank you screen. And again, this is using the same header, but it's just giving them a quick thank you, inserting their name, and it's giving them instructions for next step. Um, for all of our contests, we are gonna have a really big um, comment and share section because contests are really about sharing. We want them to share your brand and tell their friends about um, their entry. So this is where you would um, click and customize however you want. You know, enter, oops, let's click over here after the approved and say thank you. You know, whatever you want to say, you can say um, here within this particular content block. Once you're done with this, I'm going to save and continue. Uh, before I leave, just to show you, if you want to have a, a glance of what it might look like in a mobile phone, you can do that as well. You can, get, you can continue by clicking social share at the top or the continue button at the bottom. And you can always go back to previous steps if you need to do that. So think of this screen as what happens after the end user submits their entry and clicks the share button. The social share step really determines what's going to happen at that point. Um, first thing I want to note is on the left, you'll always want to allow the user to share their submission to social for a contest. You can make it a private contest if it's like an internal corporate thing where you're just trying to collect entries and there's going to be judges that do all the voting, no public voting you can go ahead and turn this off, but most of the people are gonna to wanna to leave this um, with social sharing intact. On the right side, I wanna draw a distinction here. This allows us to give some customization as to what is going to be shared when the person who enters your contest shares their entry. The distinction is on the previous screen, on the design screen, that's where we determine what the, um, the social feed is going to look like when somebody shares the overall campaign. Like when you invite people to go to your contest, that's going to be the uh, preview image that shows and the preview title and preview description. However, if somebody actually enters your contest and shares their entry, well, this is where you determine what that is going to look like in the social feed. So this is all pertaining to a particular entry that comes in. So with that in mind, let's click edit. LinkedIn um, is the only one that really lets you change your title and description. So make sure this looks the way you want. You can also upload a custom image um, or reuse a previous image. Um, just know that if they've entered a photo contest entry, it's going to use their photo and not what you guys use. This is just more default information. Um, and whatever message that they enter in the field when they're sharing their entry, that is the information that's going to be shared as well. Down here in Twitter, you can click edit and add hashtags. So if you have a specific hashtag for your photo contest, this is a great place to add a hashtag. And what will happen is if they share and say, hey, go vote for my contest entry, once it actually pushes out to their Twitter feed, um, it's going to add the contest hashtag to it, just so you make sure um, if people are following your particular contest using a hashtag, it shows up. So let's look at the other settings on the left. There are two different places you can send them. So if I enter my photo and I share and say, hey, go vote for mine, most of the time you're gonna want it to go to the campaign microsite. However, if you're one of those people I mentioned before, that really wants to have the campaign only on your website embedded like in an iframe, then you would click here and choose the website page on your website that has the contest embedded onto it. But most of the time that will not be the case. Just send them to your campaign microsite because you know it's all mobile optimized, it's gonna work great, um, and you've already created it in your design step. Now, you can also add a default comment to their social share. So what will happen here is it will pre-populate that message share box on the thank you page, just to make it easier for them. Some people don't know what to say. Um, this way it's already pre-populated 
and all they have to do is edit it and send. You can also add a coupon or a white paper. So if you have a contest about a um, labor law poster, for example, you know what if they're taking a picture of their old labor law poster and they're getting rid of it for to replace it with a new one or something, maybe give them a link here to go to your website to purchase a new poster. And this is where you could add something like that, like view coupon or buy one for yourself and have a link to the purchase page. You get the idea. And once you approve the photo, then it's going to send all this information to their social feed. You can also override the moderation. We talked about this before. I recommend using moderation. And what moderation means is when they submit their entry, it doesn't go anywhere until you approve it. So you can disable it and post it immediately, but do so at your own risk. This is kind of like running, you know, just a hashtag contest where it's like, hey, go and, you know, tag our brand and post whatever photo you want in Instagram. The problem with that over the years, there's you know always some clowns that are going to put something up there that disparages your brand and include your hashtag. So if you want that to stop, then go ahead and leave moderation intact. That way you can delete those before they ever hit your contest so you don't wind up another example of what not to do um, in the PR world. Down below, you can also publish approved submissions to your social accounts. I highly recommend doing this. The way this works is, if I enter a photo to your contest, I probably will share that to my social feeds just because I want those votes so I can win. What happens when you approve that, it doesn't just send it to my feeds, it also sends it to your corporate feeds as well. And it's smart enough to like add their name, you know, it's just like John Henry, entered the you know photo contest and it's going to show their submission that way you're filling your social feeds with engaging content and including a link to the contest so people can go vote check it out and down below is where you select the different accounts that you wanted to go to you can actually have it go to a number of different accounts and just list all of them here moving on we are going to finish oh I didn't check an account, so I'm going to disable this for now. So moving on to save and deploy, um, we're done. We've created our contest. Notice that it's created a nice microsite link, which I'm going to copy by clicking here. You can also generate an, a QR code for your store if you want to put it on your store window. Um, you can shorten this link, and it creates a nice short version. You can also um, grab your code for your widgets. Remember I showed you in the design step how to create each of these types of widgets. Well, all of that code has already been created for you. So all you have to do is just copy it and then paste it uh, exactly as described here. Copy and paste the following code between the opening and closing body tags in your HTML web page. You can also add the tab to your fan page if you have more than 2000 likes. And that's a rule that Facebook has. Um, if you do this, um, be sure to use a Facebook tab image because certain views will, will show that tab image. And also be sure to decide if you want to use a fan gate or not. You can upload an image here and um, create a fan gate. And what our system will do is tell them, hey, please like above in order to continue to the contest. Um, and that page will be shown. And that's a great way to get yourself a lot more likes on your page. And then you would just click add to fan page uh, once you've selected which of your various fan pages you want this to go to. All right, um, let's jump over to the contest and see how it looks. I'm going to paste that uh, website, the microsite URL. So here's how it looks. We have nothing uploaded yet. You'll notice all of our customizations are intact. And um, submitting you know, here's all of the information that they would submit to upload their photo, add their caption, and finally agree to the contest rules and they can upload. They can also submit via mobile and what that does is they can enter um, which country they're from and their mobile phone number and we will actually send them a text message with a link to your microsite. So as soon as they click that, it's going to give them an entry screen where they can enter from their phone. Just makes it a lot easier for them. 
As these entries are coming in, I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. You're gonna go down to approve, and this is where your entries will start pouring in. They will sit here until you approve them. You will also get an email, whoever is set as the account moderator will get these emails saying, here's a new entry, it will show them the photo and the caption, and they can actually approve directly from their phone. Um, or you can go to this approve page under photo entries and click over here on actions and you can approve it or delete it. You can also edit their message if they made a mistake and they've asked you to change it. You can change their caption. You can see on the right side information like the photo ID, when it was submitted. Um, if you want, you can add a call to action. So if you're like an e-commerce store and somebody submits a, a photo of an in-use shot of a piece of furniture in their house, you can even add a call to action there to um, have people go and buy that item at your store and it will take them directly to that sofa's page on your site. So this is a great way to generate some revenue from your contests as well. You can filter these to quickly find one. You can filter for ones that have already been approved or ones that have not been approved yet. That way um, you're saving yourself time from sorting through all the ones that have already been approved. Um, next, I wanna show you how to moderate these uh, or, or decide who the winner is and look for fraud. So once your campaign is over and all the votes have been tallied, um, that's when you really need to start looking at who the winner is. So I'm gonna grab an old campaign so I can show you what this looks like. Uh, let's... So this old family contest, um, go over to actions and go to contest console. So this is where you manage your contest. So these are the different entries that came in. This one's already had a, a winner awarded, um, but I'll show you how to do that as well. So the first thing you wanna do is, you know, it's going to tell you which one's the best. The default is the one with the most votes. It says likes, but it really means votes. Um, so the top one should be the winner. However, before you declare them the winner, um, this is where you're gonna to go to do a couple things. You can download the image, you can export your entrant list. This will actually export all of the entrants to your contest. You can also view the voter IP addresses, which we'll do in a second. You can manage your banned IP addresses. If you notice an IP address that has been um, extremely fraudulent, and it will ban that IP address from all entries on this contest, not just for this particular photo. And you can also declare a winner. But before you do any of that, click on voter IP addresses. Um, all right, so this particular one, here are the counted entries. This was just a test. This is our test account, so there's only two votes. But as you can see, it will give you um, the city it came from, um, the organization that they work at, um, or if it's you know an individual at their home, it will show which cable organization. And some of the newer, this is back from 2013. This is seven years old. So the newer ones will actually show you the browser they use, if it's Chrome or whatnot, and the date that they um, submitted this vote, the cookie idea of the computer that they used, and the IP address that they voted from. You've got a lot of information to go on here. Our system is smart enough to notice that if it's the same cookie ID, um, it's not even going to allow them to vote multiple times, but if they've somehow circumvented it, um, you'll be able to see that here. What I like to do, because a lot of these get a lot of votes, you know, hundreds of votes, I export this to a CSV. That gives you a chance to sort um, by cookie ID first to look at all of the different votes that came in and look at the dates on them. Um, you're looking for an extreme number of votes from the same cookie ID. And if that cookie ID was used, uh, let's say you have voting frequency set to every day, but they have five for one day, well, that's a problem. Our system would normally catch that, but if there's, uh, if you have a loose enough setting set and they have, you know, if they're using a, um, some sort of a cookie generator or even using a private browser window or something like that uh, with certain types of browsers, they might be able to do that. Like I know iPhone has some strange things that happens with, with Safari. Um, there are ways that they can really go private so just look for things like that, like the same IP address multiple times per day, 
And what you can do if you find ones, find ones that you don't like is just click on it. You can click on any number of them and then click move to not counted. And all of a sudden their vote count will go down. Um, you'll still have the not counted folder that you can go to to edit this uh, or audit it. So if they challenge you, you can always pull that up and say, here are your votes. If they can prove to you that they're valid, then you can move them back to the counted folder. And uh, you always have a record of those. So that's how you would um, figure out who the voter, who the winner is. If you've removed those votes and the person is still on top, then you can go ahead and declare your winner. Um, so what I'm gonna do, let me name this third person the winner. You can name unlimited people the winner and you can name them the winner for different categories. But I'm gonna declare the winner for, um, you can have no flag or you can have second or even third place. You can also add text next to it. So if, uh, you know, you could say most popular or most creative, that type of thing, and then you submit. And when you go to this entry on the photo page, it's going to show this flag next to that particular photo. And it's also going to sort them. So since the photo contest is over, it's going to bring the winners all the way to the top so people can very quickly see who has won. So that brings us to the end of our tutorial. Um, you now know how to select create, manage a photo contest. Um, it's the same for essay contests and video contests. You know, one last thing I wanna mention, cause I've had a couple questions about this, is once the contest is over and you've named the winner, you need to notify those people by email or whatever means. Um, you might wanna change the, the header of your contest. So if people go back there to visit it, to see who won, Maybe call those people out in your header, make something nice up there, show those images like in a, in a cool way um, and call them out by name that, hey, great job um, for our three winners. Um, but you'll always want to send that final email using your own email system. If you're using MailChimp, you would just jump in there and send everybody an email um, branded as your company saying, hey, these are the winners. Click here to go see um, the finalists and see how everybody placed. So I'm looking forward to seeing all the contests you guys put out there. If you have any questions, you can always reach us in chat over here. And I appreciate your time.